Let's Explore Science. WOI-TV, in cooperation with Iowa State Teachers College, brings you another in the series, Iowa TV School Time. And now here is Mr. Waller Goleman of the Department of Teaching at Iowa State Teachers College with this morning's lesson. Good morning. This morning we have lots of equipment you can see here. We're going to uh, work with this equipment and see what we can discover is how plants get and use food. But uh, boys and girls, before we start that, I think we should introduce our young guests. Now will our young guest uh, tell who you are, your grade, and your school, so these people will know that, uh, recognize you. My name is Vicki Thompson from the Rowan School. I'm in sixth grade. Gilbert Larson, Rowan School, sixth grade. And here? Jay Anderson, Rowan School, sixth grade. I'm Karen Erickson from Rowan School, sixth grade. Now let's see what we can do with all this equipment. Over here I see a large, uh, large bottle. They tell me it's distilled water. Should we see if it's distilled water? Yeah. How are we going to tell? you know how to test for distilled water? When do you know how I can test for distilled water? Mm -hmm. you know what distilled water is, uh, Gilbert? Well, it's uh, water that, ha that has no minerals in it. Do you know how they got the minerals out of it? Well, they boiled it, uh, and then the steam went up in, they it went up in steam, and then they changed steam to water again. You uh, are telling us then that minerals don't boil away with the water. Yeah. Well, if there are no minerals in here, then we should be able to heat this water and boil it. Just to put a little in there and boil the water away and see what's left in the dish. We'll light our alcohol lamp. Start the water heating. Now, while we're doing that, let's work with this piece of equipment. We have a, just a piece of glass here, open on both ends, any piece of glass would do. Ordinary piece of blotting paper that we'll put on here. Now, that blotting paper would stay on unless I fasten it. So I will put a little piece of cloth over it, with a rubber bind around that should do it, shouldn't it? Now, what are we going to do with this? But here we have some soil. This is good black topsoil. Pour some of this soil in this jar. You see, it's very dry. We don't have any water in it, so it'll pour. That should be enough. Well, maybe we could just push this thing here. Get some more of our distilled water from the bottle. We have a good supply, don't we? Mm -hmm. Pour this water on here. What do you observe happening? The dry soil. It's getting wet. It's getting wet. You see the water going down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that water should run on through the soil. And I think we'll have to wait for the water to get through, so let's uh, uh, let's do something else. Over here, I have two geranium plants. We we have lots of equipment this morning, don't we? Let's put them right off here. Monday, when I got these from the greenhouse, they both looked about the same. Do you see any difference in them now, Karen? Do you see any difference? Well, uh, one of the radius stuff. This one. Yes. What? It is beginning to leaves are beginning to get white. Yes, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. You think they're shriveling a little. I kept this very wet, but this one doesn't look quite as healthy, does it? It, it seems to be just turning, sort of drooping over. Yes, it doesn't look very healthy. I'll tell you what I did with these geranium plants. This one was kept on a windowsill in very good light. I have a closet. Back to Teachers College, it's very dark. No light can get in, and I put this one in there Monday. And uh, it's been in there since Monday. Now, I'm going to uh, take this one back and put it in the closet again 
and save it for a few more weeks. Now the boys and girls listening to this might try this same experiment and when we come back on another TV show, you could check your results with ours. What do you suppose uh, was lacking in that dark closet? What uh, did the sunlight. Do you suppose a lamp would have done as well? Do you know? Yes. It had no sunlight. All right. Why do plants need sunlight? See, they got to have uh, carbon in the air, some dioxide in the air. You're, getting, you're on the track. They need carbon dioxide from the air. What are they going to do with this carbon dioxide from the air? Make it into sugar. Make it into sugar. Uh, I have a carbon dioxide molecule here. You see it has one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen. We show this on another TV program. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six molecules of carbon dioxide. Do you think you could uh, take these six molecules of carbon dioxide and make one molecule of sugar out of them without using anything else? Gilbert, do you think you could do that? No. What else do you need? Well, you, you need, uh, well, you have to have oxygen. Well, you have some oxygen here. What do we have in the sugar? You remember what these yellow ones stood for? The, uh, these are hydrogen. These stand for hydrogen, these are carbon, and these are oxygen. Now, if we just took the carbon dioxide, what would be missing? Hydrogen. Wouldn't have any hydrogen. Do you see any hydrogen here? Okay. You know what those molecules are? You know what mo those molecules are? More water. Molecules of water. Now, Gilbert, I wonder if you could take these six molecules of water and these six molecules of carbon dioxide, take them all apart, and build a molecule that looks just like this. While you're doing that, We'll go on with uh, something else. Over here, we have a little dry ice. Can I handle this with my hands? Can I handle it with my hands? You say for a little bit. Is it safe to handle your hand? Have you tried handling it? Is it very cold? Let's chip a piece from this. Uh, a piece of dry ice from this. Who can tell me what dry ice is? Anyone tell me what dry ice is? That's a good way to say it. It's solid carbon dioxide. I'll put it in this flask. And uh, here I have a little bottle of lime water. Let's pour a little lime water on the dry ice. We've got a lot of water vapor up here. It looks like a cloud, doesn't it? But look at the lime water. What's happened to it? No. Have you used this test before? No. You haven't used this test? No. Have you tested for carbon dioxide? No. What do you suppose I could use as a test for carbon dioxide? Um, I mean, uh, well, like, uh, blowing, uh, your carbon dioxide. Oh, you have blown your air breath through lime water, have you? Yes. Yeah. Well, we were going to do that on this program. Uh, what do you suppose I could use as a test for carbon dioxide? If dry ice is carbon dioxide and I put it in lime water and the lime water gets milky, do you see any test I could use for carbon dioxide? What will lime water do when it gets uh, carbon dioxide in it? What does it do here? Turn milky. How is our sugar molecule coming? He has, uh, hasn't gotten too far yet. He's getting it built. I think he's going to have some spare parts, isn't he? Let's try another little experiment. We'll go ahead of him a little and then come back to it to save our time. Here I have a large jar and a candle. Let's light the candle. That must have been a little wet. There it's burning. Now we'll wait until the candle starts to burn just a little better. Now let's put it down in that big jar. Let's put it down in the big jar. 
There it is. Now oh, the candle seems to burn all right in there. Let's take a piece of wet cardboard and close the mouth of the jar. Shut off the supply of air. What do you expect to happen to the candle? Go out. Have you tried this experiment before? No. Mm -hmm. Why will the candle go out, Dick? There's no air in there. Why does the candle need air? Well, to keep the flame going. What uh, part of the air does the candle use to keep the flame going? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Oxygen. Oxygen's right, yes. Well, the candle is still doing very well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No, it isn't. It's getting dimmer. Mm -hmm. It's getting dimmer, isn't it? Getting dimmer all the time. Oh, yes, it's I guess it has used up some of that oxygen, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Now we'll take the candle out. Remove it. Put this back over. What's in this bottle? Lime water. Lime water. Let's put a little lime water in there. Not that much. And we'll... You think I should shake it? Is it still clear? Let's shake it so if any carbon dioxide is in there, pick it up. Now what's happened to it? What gas was in the bottle? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. You know how it got in there? Well, was there any carbon dioxide in that bottle before I put the candle in? You think it came from the flame of the candle? The, um, Let's put some uh, some lime water in another in a beaker in which we have had no candle. Let's put a piece of cardboard over the mouth of that and shake it. Does it get milky? No. No. How did the carbon dioxide get in the jar? By the flame of the candle. Came from the flame of the candle. Do you know uh, what atoms were in the flame of the candle at uh, combined with the oxygen to make the carbon dioxide? Atoms, carbon. Atoms of carbon. Oh yes, you have your sugar molecule all built. See this sugar molecule? It is just like mine, isn't it? Do you have any spare parts left over? Yeah. Oh yes. He had lots of spare parts. What are these? They're atoms of oxygen. If we would hook them together like this in pairs, we would get oxygen gas, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. Just in pairs. Well, now let's see what he got here. You took water, carbon dioxide, and what is this? Took them apart and made what? Sugar molecule. Sugar molecule, and what do you have left over? Atoms of gas. What mm -hmm. gas? Oxygen. Atoms, molecules, we have, uh, the atoms make the molecules. We have molecules of oxygen gas. On the board, I have written what happened here. You took carbon dioxide and water. Now I have the word energy in here. I used some energy to push them together, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Energy resulted in what? Sugar and oxygen. Sugar and oxygen. By the way, uh, is that done in nature? Yes. What, uh, what does that? Plants or animals? What, Pla uh, what, were, you, what were you uh, representing here? Plants. You were representing a plant. All plants or just green ones? Do you know? All of them. You think all of them. Have you ever heard of chlorophyll? Yes. Yes. Hmm? yes. What color is it? Green. 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 Which plants have chlorophyll? Green plants. Green plants. We should have put something else. We should have said we need <laughs> chlorophyll in order to make this uh, take place. Now, if plants are doing that, then the plants will be making sugar for us, won't they? But I see a problem here. I should think the plants would use up all the carbon dioxide in the air. If you're going to have a factory, you have to have enough raw materials. Plants would soon use up all the carbon dioxide in the air and they'd have no more carbon dioxide molecules. If you didn't have carbon dioxide molecules, you couldn't build this, could you? How do you suppose the plants get a supply of carbon dioxide? From the animals. From the animals. You think from animals. Let's see if our breath has carbon dioxide. 
We will try each of you here, see if you all have breath that's about the same. Pour it for a little lime water in the bottles. <coughs> then we'll need a soda straw. Now will you pick up a bottle and blow your breath. Take it from deep in your lungs. Blow your breath in the lime water. Let's try it. Bubble it through. Just blow your breath through the lime water. Blow a little more in there. Don't see good results yet. Uh, Jane Ann getting good results. Oh yes, uh, yogurt's getting very good results. What's happening to the lime water? Turning it's milky. milky. It's turning milky. We'll put these aside, get them out of our way. What gas do you uh, breathe out from your lungs? Carbon dioxide. Is there any other way that carbon dioxide can get in the air? Think of the experiment that we did when we went ahead of Gilbert. Take a candle and uh, put her into a jar and put a lid over it. Pretty soon it uses, it gives off carbon dioxide and uses up the oxygen. All right, the candle gave off carbon dioxide, didn't it? Can you think of any other sources of carbon dioxide beside the candle and your breath? By plants? Okay. You think some plants give off carbon dioxide in living. Let's see if they do. But here I have some seeds that have been sprouting. We can't see them very well. There's wet fouling in the bottom. They've been sprouting and germinating. And uh, about 24 hours ago, I put this cork in so no gas could enter or leave. Now these little plants have been pushing out roots. I wonder if they have been uh, using oxygen, burning with food as much as we do. Let's see. Put a little lime water in here. On these seeds. Let's shake it. Oh, notice what's happened. Let's pour it out. It's turned milky. You already see that it's turned milky, have you? You're a very good observer. Oh, yes, it has turned milky, hasn't it? Maybe we should examine one of these seeds and find out what's going on in there. Let's take one apart. You all close enough here to see the seed? Let's see, we have a little seed coat on it. We'll take that off. Put that there. And let's break the uh, bean seed in half. Well, look what I discovered. What is that? The root. The root and the top is a bean plant? It isn't very well grown yet, is it? It's just a sprout, you say. It isn't very well grown, is it? Mm. But look what I have over it. Oh, yes, I got part of the leaf off here with it. That belongs with the bean plant. Maybe that's why you didn't recognize it. Now I have something left over. You can store it up so it can grow until it has, it has a, a roots enough to get its own. Now you did very well to the end. What does it need to get its own food? What color does it have to be? Chlorophyll. It needs chlorophyll. to turn green to get chlorophyll, and it had to have enough energy to grow up. Let's take a look at these sprouting beans. And uh, here we have some of the same beans. They're just a little part of the lawn. They've grown a little more than this one. Do they have their store? Are they taking their uh, stored food right with them as they come up? Yes. Where is it? Right in there. In there. I wonder what would happen if we took the stored food away from some of them. Do you think they'd stop growing? Why? Are they ready to make their own food yet? Yes. Are they a little green? Yes. They're a little green, aren't they? Let's try it. Now it'll take several weeks to find out what's happened here. We'll carefully cut the stored food off without hurting the, the plant. Cut off here without injuring the plant at all. We should do that on several of them. This one can match that one, can't it? Let's cut the stored food from this one. Now we're very careful not to injure the plant. I'll take these back with me and put them where they have a chance to grow and find out 
what happens. Maybe we can show them to you on another TV program. Let's take one more. We'll make three. Now I'll put this one in bright light so that these green leaves can make any food. Do you think the plants can still live? Yes. Here we have another. These uh, weren't so ambitious. They didn't grow up so much, did they? Let's take some of the <coughs> seed halves off these. Yes. That one doesn't have much chlorophyll, does it? Mm-mm. When some of these others come up, I will take the seed halves uh, from them. They aren't sprouted quite enough. And I'm going to put this one in a dark closet. Take the store of food away and put it in the dark closet. Do you have any idea what might happen? It won't grow. It can't make its own chlorophyll. You think that they won't grow at all? Do you think these, without the uh, stored food, will starve? Yes. Just like, yeah. that, just like that point right there. Well, let's go back to our distilled water. It's been evaporated now. Notice any deposit in there? Any minerals? Yes. Yeah. Right. Don't touch it's hot. You yeah. see there's something in there. Let's put this one aside for a comparison. Let's put another one on here. I think we have enough water from our sea our soil. Let's put some of this, a little of this in the evaporating dish. Put it on the, Bunsen, on the alcohol lamp and let it evaporate. And uh, we'll go back and work with something else. Let's see what we have here. Well, this is an onion that's been kept in a dark box. How could you tell that it's been in a dark box? No chlorophyll. No chlorophyll. How do you know if there's any chlorophyll? It isn't very green. It's uh, yellowish. Yes, it looks very yellowish. Do you think these plants have been making their own food? Yes. How could they? They don't have any chlorophyll. Did they have light? No, they couldn't make their own food. And then they had it stored up. Where was it stored? In the, in the, inside. In the tuber of the onion? Yes. The bulb of the onion, rather? How could you tell by feeling it that probably they've been using food from there? Well, it's sort of soft. Yes, it's much softer than the onions that your mother raises in the garden, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, this uh, onion we will put in a light place. What do you think will happen to the leaves? Mm-hmm. Yes. If we put it in a, in a light, it's the leaves will start to turn uh, green. Oh, I see one of our other piece of apparatus is now operating. Let's go back. We have to jump back and forth here to make things work. Do you remember when you made the molecule of sugar? What did you have left over here? Molecules of oxygen gas. Mm-hmm. Do you think green plants uh, would give off this oxygen gas if they made sugar? Yes. Let's see if they are. Here we have some green plants, some water plants. And we've been shining a bright light on them here for about an hour. I don't know how ambitious they are. Can you see any thing? Bubbles are coming from the top. You can see bubbles coming from the top. What do you suppose the bubbles are? Oxygen. They're giving off oxygen. uh, Let's go back to our two equations on the board. This one. Where, where green plants in sunlight take carbon dioxide and water molecules and put them together and have the energy of the sun and get sugar and oxygen. That process has a big name. I have it written on the board. Can you draw a line from the word up to that equation? That's right. You think you can remember that big word? Photo means light, doesn't it? Like a photograph. And synthesis means to put together, that, like you put the sugar molecule together. Remember when we blow our breath through the lime water, turn milky? This is what happened. Our blood carried sugar up to our cells. The sugar, the blood also brought some oxygen. And then the body put them together. And what did we get? What use do you have for the energy? How do you use the energy that you get? Gilbert? When you play. When you play. Do you use energy to run around when you play? Yes. Sure. 
Yes. Yes, you need that energy to get up to the studio this morning, didn't you? Let's see what else we get. What's this? Carbon dioxide mm -hmm. and water. And water. We already tested to show that your lungs give off carbon dioxide. Do you know a test to show that your lungs give off water? Simple test. When we have a cold morning. Blow on a window pane. You can blow on a window pane, you can see your breath. Now, do you think all that water that your lungs give off is that that was made when you burn sugar with oxygen? Or do you drink water also? Yes, you also drink water. But some of it probably was. Now I have a big word on the board. Respiration. respiration. Do you want to draw the line from respiration? Now we see if we read this one backwards, what do we get? If you read that one backwards, which one do you get? Respiration. You get respiration. If you read respiration backwards, what do you get? Which one do you get if you read respiration backwards? Okay. You get photosynthesis. Uh, which living thing uh, does this? Plants. Which living thing does this? Animals. Do plants ever do this? No. At night. At night, you say, when there's no sunlight on them. Do germinating seeds do this? What was our result with the germinating seeds in the lime water? Yes. They do. Now, if these two are just opposites, plants and animals should live together very nicely, shouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. They should be able to live together very uh, nicely. Well, we, that's what we have in this balanced aquarium. What are the animals? Fish. What do the, uh, what do the fish give off? The snails also, I'm glad you brought it in. What do the fish give off that's used Oxygen. by the plant? Wait a second, what do the fish give off that can be used for the plant? Carbon dioxide. What do the plants give off that can be used for the fish? Oxygen. And they live very nicely, but you say, well, they have air here. The oxygen could come out of the air, couldn't it? Yes. It could come from the air. Now we have another little aquarium. Do we have anything living in that? Two fish and plants and a couple of snails. Oh, yes. Now we're going to play a little trick on these. We're going to shut them out from the outside world. We're going to shut them out from the outside world. This cover, see it has a very good seal. I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to seal it so tightly no air can get in and no air can leave. And then we'll just have to wait for things to happen. We'll bring that back on another TV program to find out if our fish are living or if they're dead. Now you might try this in your own classroom. Could you find some small fish? Yes. Okay, a very good one for you to try. You can compare your results with ours. Well, let's go back to our alcohol flame. Did we get a deposit? Yes. Yes, it turned a little black. There was some carbon in it. Uh, that's the minerals from the soil that the plant will use. Now, uh, our engineer is giving us the time signal. Our program is over, practically over. I wish, I hope that the boys and girls watching this enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed uh, putting on the program for you. I hope that you try some of these experiments in your own schoolroom so that you can check our uh, results against yours. And uh, you boys and girls have been uh, a very in a good class. <laughs>